Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is September 20th, 2016. I have some asteroid slash meteor updates for you. And we have some pretty good news. I just got off the phone with my friend Ashari over in Kuwait about two hours ago. And apparently they are in somewhat of celebrations. Our conversation consisted of what in the hell's going on? And uh, he basically told me quite a bit. But let's cover some other information quick. This is the rocket that was sent up into space by the United States government and NASA. If you take a look at the nose of this rocket, it's quite large. I believe this is the largest rocket that can carry the heaviest payload, which would be a nuclear weapon. The nuclear weapon was used to detonate and fragment this large asteroid. Now, something that I found very peculiar... If you take a look at the paint job logo on this rocket, this was supposed to be some type of exploratory rocket. I just found it odd that would be the paint job on this rocket. Kind of reminded me back in the World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, and even going back to our wars in the Middle East when the pilots would paint messages on their missiles that they were about to drop. And that logo looks like a message to me. Anyways, we definitely know that uh, NASA does not tell us everything that they are doing. This asteroid was not reported at all. It was a very big surprise to NASA. The asteroid was first detected on March 3rd, 2016. And then the scramble began. The asteroid was not only detected by NASA, it was also detected by China and Russia. And between the United States government and Russia, well, let's just say a little war of words ensued between our president and Putin. And they were basically wanting to know who was going to be responsible for shooting this thing down. And the war of words began. At this point, NASA and the United States government scrambled to get rockets prepared. I mean, let's face it, folks. Um, the United States government and NASA, they don't have rockets sitting on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral with nuclear warheads attached to them. So it does take some time to get this together. And the first launch was scheduled for June. Now, I know I'm going to get a bunch of questions about, you know, mathematics and, you know, how far and this and that. Well... Listen, I'm going to give you the information real quick. The size of the asteroid was 1.5 kilometers long, basically 0 0.0932 miles, less than a mile. Now, that would have been a devastating catastrophe if a mile-long, mile-wide asteroid hit the Earth at 40, 50,000 miles per hour. The kinetic energy would have been absolutely super intense catastrophic damage massive loss of life if it would have hit in the atlantic ocean pacific you're talking about tsunamis uh we could be you know talking about all of these hypothetical situations all night long the asteroid was detected at approximately two au's away which would be approximately 186,000 miles away it was finally detected as speed coming towards earth at a little over 100,000 miles per hour. So, for all of you math nuts, if you want to put all that mathematics together, you can see that we had only a few months to get ourselves together and try to make attempts to blow this thing up. Fragment it is what they wanted to do. Now, earlier on in my report, in the beginning of the week, I had a comment that said, oh, this would take eight years for a rocket to travel 186 million miles. Well, obviously you're not that very good at mathematics because if an object is traveling at you at over 100,000 miles per hour and you are sending a rocket towards that object at approximately 40,000 or 50,000 miles per hour, well, the distance between the two is decreasing by the second. So let's kind of throw that out the door. And they figured it would take approximately 31 days to make impact. So they prepared other rockets ready to go on the pad for
for July, August, and then September. Now, Russia had a rocket prepared, and it was set as a backup. That was canceled. I did a report on that the other day when I did an update. So, as we are standing right now, the impacts and detonations were successful. Now, listen, guys, I know a lot of us, we don't believe in NASA, and we talk a lot of trash on them, but I want to tell you something. If, in fact, this is 100% true that NASA was able to accomplish this, you have to give them a hands up. I mean, a real big thumbs up, because a mile-long asteroid hitting the Earth would have killed a lot of people. It would have caused a lot of catastrophic damage. That's an absolute fact. Now, we are going to be undergoing some meteors, meteorites uh, coming into our atmosphere. We are already seeing them. And I had a question, and I have a friend of mine, his name's Dave. He is an air traffic controller at Pittsburgh International Airport. And what made me think of it is one of our subscribers was getting ready to take off on a plane, and the plane was held up, and they were at Kansas City, Missouri, looked up in the sky and snapped this photograph, and what do you see in the sky? You see a little fireball right there. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see. Hopefully, you're watching this on a big screen or you can, you know, tune into this. But uh, there's a little fireball in the sky. So, it prompted me to give a call to my buddy Dave. So, I got Dave on the phone and I point blank asked him, Dave, how do you handle inbound fiery objects flying out of the sky, such as meteors, asteroids? What do you guys do with the air traffic? He said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Who told you that? Now, Dave's been an air traffic controller for about 20 years. Um, he reminds me of kind of a, a CIA, FBI agent type of guy. He's real secure with his job, doesn't like to talk about it very much. But I told him, I said, listen, we've been seeing all these things in the media. I'm reporting on it. Other places are reporting on it. We know that something's going on in the skies. So how do you guys handle this? If there are meteors just flying through the sky at 15 to 20,000 miles an hour, well, if a small fragment hits an airliner, well, we're talking about uh, total loss of life. And he said to me, look, he goes, we have direct information with the United States Air Force. We know everything that is coming down at this point in time. And then he got a little salty with me and told me that um, he didn't like the idea of me putting him on the spot about this type of information. But it's important information. And we disconnected our phone conversation. And that was that. So, folks, I guess we're going to be seeing some little fireballs in the skies for probably the next couple of days, maybe a week or more. I really couldn't tell you. But at least we're not going to get crushed by a mile-long asteroid. Thumbs up to NASA. I want to take this opportunity to give a little shout-out to BP Earthwatch. I heard uh, that YouTube channel gave us a little bit of uh, credit on breaking this story. And they previewed us in one of their YouTube videos. I want to just tell you guys, I uh, absolutely love your show. I don't miss an episode. That is a fact. A lot of other channels and media sources were using our story. And I'm not sure if we kind of broke this story or what, but it made its way from Kuwait all the way to the United States. And from that point, it made it to everyone's cell phone, computer, TV. And I'm hoping now that we could all feel a lot safer. But I don't think we're out of the woods yet. But anyways, thank God this is almost over. I'd like to thank all of our Nibiru watchers out there. You guys doing a fantastic job. Love every one of you. Keep all your emails coming in. NibiruPlanetX2016 at gmail.com. Don't forget to share our videos with your friends and family members on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to the Nibiru channel for all of our current updates. And like I always say, keep an eye in the sky. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is September 20th, 2016. I have some asteroid slash meteor updates for you. And we have some pretty good news. I just got off the phone with my friend Ashari over in Kuwait about two hours ago. 
and apparently they are in somewhat of celebrations. Our conversation consisted of what in the hell's going on? And uh, he basically told me quite a bit. But let's cover some other information quick. This is the rocket that was sent up into space by the United States government and NASA. If you take a look at the nose of this rocket, it's quite large. I believe this is the largest rocket that can carry the heaviest payload, which would be a nuclear weapon. The nuclear weapon was used to detonate and fragment this large asteroid. Now, something that I found very peculiar. If you take a look at the paint job logo on this rocket, this was supposed to be some type of exploratory rocket. I just found it odd that would be the paint job 